Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. We are back for another Monday Night Market Watch. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe. If this is not your first time on the channel, for some reason you're crazy, and you're back here again to watch some more garbage tier content. We're here to take a look at the market this side of the pond. Obviously, we normally see all these American market watches, but what's going on in Europe? What's going on in the UK? And that's the aim of this series. So if this is not the kind of thing that you'd normally watch, that's fantastic to see you here. We're going to stop waffling. We're going to take a look at some tip-offs I've had, some reprints that are coming up, some new prints that have come out, and just see, in general, how they're getting on. But as promised, that's enough waffling. We're going to get stuck right in to the market watch now. Let me first just go ahead and say apologies if you hear any kind of weird sounds. My fucking pug is down here making a ton of noise. And also, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my laptop screen, which is right in front of me, so I can bring you these curvatures that are going on in the market. But we're going to stop waffling. We're going to get stuck right in. So the first tip-off of the day has come from the ever-elusive Gramps. If you know who he is, you know. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's a need-to-know basis. But anyway, he tipped me off that Trishula had been going through the roof. Not the normal Trishulas that you expect, the Fusion Trishula. So as always, our attempt here is to go for something near mint and in English, and that's normally our minimum barometer for when we look at cards on card market. Of course, in Euros, which you can see a conversion rate up on the top of the screen at the moment to give you a rough idea of the price in Great British Pounds or US Dollars if you want to work in those the minimum that you can get these for at the moment is 32 euros 50 this is actually a huge spike not so long ago they were as little as 15 euros it's also worth noting that i'm pretty sure if i remember rightly that this card is getting reprinted very soon this indicates one of two things to me obviously the people want to have the better rarity available and maybe they're expecting that the rarity printed in the tins because I believe that's when we're getting it, won't be as good, although it could be in Battles of Legend. It's one of the two. But in any case, people are expecting that this version will be worth more. It's also worth noting that this is probably the most competitively viable out of all of these weird retrains. This card's actually really, really solid. But for what it's worth, if you're thinking of selling up this card, now might be a really good time to do it. The fact that a print is coming out probably indicates that we'll see some more prints down the line. Almost certainly, I can't see it holding this kind of value. Next, we're looking at one of our regular movers, Garden Rose Maiden. Of course, this continued to creep up. There is a tiny bit of a tail down at the very end there, but 18 euros. The price trend over the 30 days was 11 euros. That indicates that it is continuing to go up. If you're looking to get rid of this card now, might be a really, really good time to do so. There's a good chance that we see this reprinted in one of the future Legendary Duelist reprint sets that we are seeing come out. We've got Season 1 coming just around the corner, although these aren't in there. So there is also that to bear in mind if it's something you think you're going to use, then of course you hold. But otherwise, just sell them up and wait for the reprint if you don't think you'll need it in the meantime. Next, we're looking at Access Code Talker, one that we've monitored again over the last few weeks. Something I wanted to see how the price would change now that we've got the American prints in circulation, because of course there was that big divide in time for when these cards were coming around. At the moment, 64 euros is the minimum that you can get one of these in. In fact, it seems to have plateaued around there, and it doesn't seem like it's going to come down anytime soon. It's really important to note that competitive play could actually be right around the corner, particularly in the EU. We've had this uh, press release type thing put out by Konami that gives us guidelines on how to work with COVID. So people are expecting this to be right around the corner. And I do believe that this is a card that you must have access to for your extra deck. This power creeps so many other Link 4s in the game right now. It's incredibly important. It's a really good way to obliterate your opponent's resources. It does massive damage. It does absolutely everything you could want and it's easy easy as fuck to summon now of course we have to do a little bit of weird memory going on somehow someone figured out an ftk most of the coverage that i've seen to do with that is over on the disciples channel i recommend you go and check them out so you can see the crazy theory and the maths and the coding that went into figuring out an ftk involving a fucking earthbound immortal 
Seriously, though, go check out those videos. It's absolutely wild. Big brain shit going on there. Really impressive and well done, you guys, if you by chance are watching this. But in any case, of course, this will have an effect on the market. At the moment, the cheapest you can get these in good condition is around 19 euros for Ultimate Rare. However, if you want to take a further look down the page and just see how we're getting on here, for something in near mint, it's a minimum of 30. Uh, and then the rest of the near mints are a minimum of of 40 euros and upwards. Expect these to start disappearing at the lower end of the market, in particular because we know we've got no more format again before September, so there will be people that play around with this and kind of just do some degenerate shit, maybe get some free wins at locals, whatever, whatever. But there'll be a few people that intend to turn up and ruin other people's days at these tournaments, and this is going to be a big part of it. Expect these to disappear at the low end, and uh, yeah, but don't be surprised when the prices are going up. I also wanted to take a look at the collector tin version and what you see really just speaks for itself. In English, in near mint, there is only a single copy on card market at 30 euros minimum. Expect this to be gone pretty soon as well, probably by the time this video is up. And with those Dragon Link shenanigans, I wanted to take a look at some of those Dragon Link cards. In fact, just two that sort of see a bit of play involved with this so striker dragon is the first one surprisingly hasn't started to go up just yet there are 10 euros a pop and if you intend to play the deck now might actually not be the worst time to pick a copy of this card up i don't know for sure if these are in the tins if they are of course it may be worth holding out but if they're not this is probably something you should pick up Dragon Link is a fantastic deck. It has been really good since we saw the Rocket decks come out. But of course, it's always had that kind of ability to just lose to a single hand trap. Whereas now it is far more resilient than it was before. It's doing far better in the meta than we had kind of anticipated. And the fact that it's now kind of involved in FTKs, you can expect that these cards are going to start picking up in value soon. Next, we have Starly Schaefer. One of the cards that most people are kind of anticipating might get reprinted in the Toon Chaos set, and yet here we are. It has not had a reprint. Will we see one soon? That's open for debate. At the moment, though, they are a minimum of 23 euros. For the most part, they have been sat around the 20 euro mark, so this is a slight increase on their kind of expected value, but overall, they're kind of just yo-yoing all over the place. It's really important to note that dragons only ever get better, especially Chaos ones, and the fact that we've had all this other Chaos support, don't be surprised if this gets broken even further than it already is. It's actually a fantastic card, and I'm kind of surprised it hasn't gone higher than it is now. If you haven't got these already, now probably isn't a bad time to be picking them up. Next, we're covering Omni Dragon Brotor. Just one of those cards that, again, is seeing loads of play. It is in Dark Neo Storm, which, again, I believe maybe getting reprinted in the tins. My timelines are a little bit off here. I probably should have been a little bit more ready for this commentary, but there we go. You can get these as cheap as €5. Euros. It's actually probably not a bad time to pick them up. The original print is always going to hold a little bit more value. It's a dark, it's a dragon. It's everything that you could possibly want to go into a dragon-type build. And at the moment, Dragon Link is continuing to rise up. Expect these to go up with it. Next, with the Sacred Beast right around the corner, we have seen the database release so we can see exactly what is in that structure deck. I'll leave that open to you as to whether you think that's a good investment or not. But what we are seeing is support for a big anime style fan favorite. So expect that people are going to want to get hold of these cards. I imagine it'll still sell hot, like hotcakes, maybe not to the competitive market, but most certainly to the casual market. And ultimately, they do make up the vast majority of it. However, people are going to pick up the ultimate rares of these. They've always been a bit of a collector's items. They've always had some really good value, but I think that we're only going to see this increase over time. We start off with Heyman, Lord of the Striking Thunder. Very dramatic. Uh, 60 euros at a minimum for near mint. Something in good condition apparently is 75. And as we go further down, you just see these prices increase. Of course, there are first editions here as well, which are significantly more. The cheapest first edition that you can get hold of in just light play is 150 euros for something in near mint. 300 and 50 euros this is insane i don't know whether this is a good investment or not i guess an old ulti that we're probably not going to see reprinted you know it's going to hold some collector value i would guess um will it go up from there maybe if you've got something in fantastic condition like a psa i don't know eight nine ten whatever then you're going to see a bit more value out of it but kind of a sketchy investment 
And we wouldn't be true to form if we weren't covering the other two as well. Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames, uh, the kind of Slifer retrain, which I'm sure most of you have figured out by now. The cheapest one available in just good condition is 280 euros. If you want something in first edition, 750 euros. Euros. Does somebody know the reason that this is so high? Is this because it's like easier to summon? Is it because it's the best one? I haven't even looked at these cards in fucking years. I can't even tell you what this thing does anymore. Why is it 750 euros? And lastly, we're looking at the shit obelisk, Ravel, Lord of Phantasms. Of course, it's an ultimate rare, so again, expecting big money here. For something near mint, 90 euros. For an unlim, if we look a bit further down, for a first head in just good condition, 300 euros. For something near mint, 350 at a minimum. And then the rest are 500 plus euros. Absolutely insane to me. I, I don't really get it, but collector's market eh i mean there's a few cards to be fair that i've got that i've picked up over time that are worth way more than they really should be considering they just say blue eyes white dragon on them and i probably will pick up even more of those so i probably shouldn't insult anyone for picking these up but whatever works you i guess these ultimate rares they do hold a nice value and they're probably a cool thing to have in your binder if you're going to sell up though now is probably as good a time as any if you want to cash in and next I wanted to take a look at a few of these really cool staple cards that have been over time yo-yoing all over the place. We are anticipating some reprints and that is what we're looking at here for the next couple of cards just to see how those things are changing up. So the first one we start off with is Borrowload Savage Dragon. Highly anticipated to likely be in the tins and potentially more reprints in the near future. Savage Strike, that weird one that missed out on last year's tins, just, just, just missed out. Unfortunately, we've had to wait a really long time for some reprints, which is of course... Why you see part of extravagance as high as it is, and we will go on to cover that shortly. However, Borrowed Savage Dragon, at the minimum of 45 euros in Unlim, which I, I don't think is a good investment at all. If you want to go and look at the first edge, you can get one for 46 euros, uh, 48 maybe 55 euros across the board. Probably spend that little bit extra to get the original print in first edge if you're going to do it. It may be worth waiting though, because I can imagine this would be the kind of card that we might even see the likes of ulti printings and OTS packs, or potentially a rarity bump in the tins. And next we're looking at Appaloosa again, another one that we know will be getting some sort of reprint over the rest of this year, and so we are seeing the price come down. However, it is important to note that you, again, it's one of those cards that you really do need to have in your collection for tournaments, particularly at regional level and higher, and we are anticipating that we may see organised play, at least particularly here, start to resume. We have seen it in some European countries, probably the UK in the next three to four weeks, I would have thought, uh, and probably again across the US in the States that bothered to care about about it but that's a political debate we don't really want to get into in any case we are seeing these dip down we have seen a little bit of a tail up again but i think that we're probably going to see this continue downward overall we're probably going to see this set at around maybe 40 euros or so if you're looking to sell up now is probably a good a time as any unless you do really want to just have the original print of course if you've got the starlight rare you don't give a shit about secret rares and this is a non-argument to be even having anyway and next, we wanted to take a look at some of the effects of Toon Chaos. There is a lot of hype at the moment around the Noble Knight deck. I'm seeing this across the board, uh, across different levels of play. Casuals love it because they love their fucking Noble Knights. The competitive players are kind of looking at it and going, this thing can actually kick. It's really consistent. It's got a nice few combos. And, you know, there's some diehard fans out there as well. In particular, because people just love the Noble Knight artwork. Myself included, unfortunately, that whole platinum thing happened, but we won't go there. I digress. In any case, 21 euros is the minimum that you can get a gear freed or god freed, as I always seem to accidentally call it. God freed the Iron Knight. God freed the immortal Iron Knight. Immortal Phoenix. God freed. Fucking idiot. In any case, 21 euros is the minimum. Scooping upwards. I expect that this may actually go up again in future, so don't be surprised if we see that happen. The overall trajectory at the moment is down, however I think once Rise of Duel this comes out and this set is out of print, although we have just had basically an announcement for Unlims. I don't know if it's an announcement, but it's kind of been thrown out there that everyone just knows this, that this is happening uh, towards the end of the year, so some people will just hold on for that and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to get your first dead prints, now is probably a good a time as any because there is a chance that it goes up and I really don't see it going below this 21 euro mark anytime soon. And since we've looked at that print, we might as well look at collector's rare as well. A minimum of 100 euros just in 
good condition. Again, probably one of these unfortunate factory defects that we have seen so many of out of the set. This is actually kind of cool in a weird way because you, you're taking a punt and there's a chance maybe you get something really bad, but you might get something really, really cool as well, in which case the value just goes through the roof. 105 to 110 euros is about the going rate for one of these. Of course, we've seen it come down now that the hype is, I wouldn't say dying off, but people have sort of prioritized. If I can spend 100 euros on Godfried or I can spend 100 euros on Gamma, it's pretty much a no contest. And continuing with this team, we are looking at Infernoble Knight Roland. We have seen this absolutely plummet through the floor. These are going to be super easy to pick up. This one actually isn't played as much in the full build. Of course, some people will disagree with me, but my, uh, my sources tell me that this isn't played as much, which is probably part of the reason we've seen it go down. Renaud, on the other hand, which we're going to cover in a moment, is absolutely critical, and you are seeing that in the price, trust me. And as promised with Renaud, it's went down and now it's going right the way back up. We are seeing a creep right up. It's happening in the US as well. So it's not just here that it's going like this. We're seeing it shoot up towards that 25 euro mark where probably it will settle potentially as high as 30, I would have thought. Unlikely to go more than that. But again, one of those cards that if you happen to have pulled it, you're in great luck. If you haven't got it already and you do want to get it, well, now's the time. You're going to have to start paying up soon. Smoke Grenade of the Thief. We're looking at two different prints, as we always do. Of course, this card is part of the hand loop that's going on with this deck. The Magic card variant, the original print. €12 Euros for something in good condition at a minimum. Let's go ahead and take a look at Near Mint and see what they are doing. So you can get one for around 15 um, But again, up towards the €20 Euro mark for something in Near Mint where it says Magic card on it instead of Spell card, which is really, to be fair, I kind of dig that shit, so I shouldn't laugh and take the piss. Legacy of Darkness, definitely the best one. In any case, we're going to go ahead and look at the other rarity. Contrary to my opinion, it seems the player opinion is that this is the better version, and we're seeing that in that overall price. A minimum of 14 euros for something in near mint, although let's go ahead and look at something further down. Okay, there are no first editions. D did we get a first edition of Dark... Dark Beginnings? I don't know. It's so long ago, I can't remember. In any case, you are seeing them around 15 euros a pop. That is what you're looking across the board, more or less, depending on which version you want. Maybe slightly more if you want the other, I guess. Uh, but the, the minimum price on these is a little bit higher. Either way, this card is trajecting upward. I don't see it getting a reprint just yet, because this is the kind of card that Konami will probably just yeet off in the ban list. Um, it's not really going to damage anyone. It's really just quite degenerate. And of course, it's one of those old cards that just didn't get once per turn printed on it like they really should have done. And we're on to our last few that we wanted to cover in here. We're actually looking at uh, three different cards, but all in different rarities of the same thing. Uh, so we're starting off with Pot of Extravagance. I wanted to see how this was getting on. Again, it is worth noting that whilst we have got three current prints of this card, which is insane because we've had two in the space of like, well, one set. So this feels really, really strange that we're even talking about this. But we're potentially going to see it in the tins again. Uh, for another print so probably worth holding out for those of you someone who just wants to pick them up doesn't really care about the rarity but of course if you want to invest some money there are some lucrative choices out there uh 225 euros at a minimum on the collector's rares um Again, expect that we're going to see tons of defects out of these that might even be able to get the price down. As long as it doesn't stop the card being playable, people will still pick them up for a pretty healthy price. But let's go ahead and look at some of the other prints and see how they're getting on too. The ultra rare version at almost €40 Euros a pop. I did not expect to see it this high. I honestly, honestly, me, I thought maybe 20 euros at tops. We're seeing it at almost double that at this stage. Almost double for an ultra print when the secrets were less than that just before this set dropped. That's insane to me. And we are going to go ahead and take a look at those secrets and see what the price difference is now. So just remember, 38 euros for something good, but we'll, we'll disregard that. Let's look at near mint. Near mint between 38 and 40 euros is the going rate. So let's go and look at the secrets and see how they're getting on relative to this. So your secret rares, if you don't mind them being unlimbs, you can get them for 45, which for an extra 5 or a pop, or 5 euros a pop, I should say. I don't know what the lingo is in Europe for 5, but here it's a 5. Anyway, uh, so 5 euros difference. Of course, if you want to go for something in first edition, you can get them for around 50, uh, and then up towards the 50 
five mark. I would probably say if you're gonna invest in these and you want to get the better rarities, of course, collector's rare is the ultimate one to pick up. But not everyone can afford that. Not everyone's wallet is that big. Completely understand. If you're gonna look at the ultras or the secrets, I would go for the secrets and spend the extra and get them in first edition. That's a far more sensible investment for your money. However, I do expect the prices on all of these, apart from the collector's rare, to start dropping especially once we have another print out and don't be surprised in the next six months to a year we end up seeing this shit reprinted in structured x as a common just two more cards i wanted to cover in this market watch both in different rarities of course as discussed the chaos creator this is one that i'm actually quite interested in seeing the hypers die down a little bit on it but it does have some really cool effects and has a lot of potential i think in the right decks in particular in the likes of say thunder dragon or Maybe you like some Chaos Shadows and uh, Jamie the Kid, one of my buddies, you can go and check his profile out on that. Shout out to him, the uh, third best YouTuber in Milton Keynes these days. In any case, I digress. 19 euros is the minimum you're going to get one of these for. Again, look out for some defects. You may get ones with like a crimp edge or something that you could probably use at a tournament and still be okay. They'll be a lot cheaper if you want to save some money there. But I actually think that this is probably going to come down. The collector's rare, of course, will hold value. That's to be expected. But I think that this is probably going to be dropping. And as we see here now, the price is all over the goddamn place. We see it scooped down. Now it's coming back up. That's probably quite natural to expect of most of the collector's rares. Because, of course, we know that that first edition run is basically over. Uh, we know that the Unlimited run is going to be coming, which means we may not even see more first ed, first ed boxes printed. That could be bad knowledge. It's just a speculation. I could be entirely wrong. You may know contrary to my opinion there. Uh, but we are probably going to see the price on these go up very slightly because they will become, of course, a collectible. The clue is in the name. Uh, but I don't think it will go up much more than it is now. And down to our last card, again in two different rarities, Chaos Space in Super Rare. You can get them as cheap as €4.50 on the card market, which is actually quite quite good, to be fair. Most of the eBay prices are pushing up towards the €8.9 Euro mark. I do anticipate that this card will go up in price. It's actually insane. Have you read this goddamn card? You need a play set of this in your collection, even if you don't intend to use it just yet. It may be a while before we see a reprint. Of course, we will have the Unlim run towards the end of the year, which will probably keep these prices from going too high, but fully expect that we could easily see these go up towards the 8 9 potentially €10 Euro mark, even on card market, once competitive play resumes. And then for our final card in this long ass market watch, congratulations if you've made it this far, we're looking at the collector's rare edition of exactly the same card, 120 euros. Do you have 360 euros for, for a play set of these? Do you? Why haven't you bought them yet? You, why are you watching my market watch? You already own the goddamn things. In any case, that's enough nonsense from me. Collector's rare version of Chaos Space, 120 euros again, the minimum. I can probably see these going up, in particular if we see it have some competitive success, which we have started to see a little bit with the Dragon Link, and we see that again, that little kick up, but that is normal, of course, for these. I do expect these to go up actually probably a fair amount if this takes off, uh, and don't be surprised if we see that in the price. And that is everything for today's Market Watch. Hopefully you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed bringing this content to you, even if it is in some sweltering heat. Hopefully I'm not too sweaty by the end of this goddamn thing. It's disgusting. Anyway, we've had to switch off the fan for this shit, so you better really appreciate it because it's too fucking loud. In any case, thank you very much for having joined me here. Hopefully you've really enjoyed this. If there are cards you would like me to cover, you have a chance to comment down below i'm sure you can find me on plenty of social media slots usually on facebook just milling around doing my own fucking thing and if you do see me about and you want to reach out and discuss some content you'd like to see on the channel absolutely i am welcome to it just don't be a fucking weirdo and lastly apologies about that weird grunting you're probably hearing in the background that is my fucking pug who's decided to set up behind the camera and sit there and make his snores that he does whilst he's awake Seriously, that's what I have to put up with. But again, that's enough of your time wasted. The fact that you made it this far is absolutely fucking incredible. So, enough of that nonsense. Thank you very much for checking in. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.